This is a finance case, so you're going to need to make calculations. Let's look at the different calculations you're going to need. First, you'll need to calculate a discount rate. So you'll need to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. The first step here is to allocate the cost of equity. You have information on comparable companies. You can take the betas of the comparable company and lever them to turn equity betas into asset betas and average them. Here you must make a decision. Are you going to use all the comparable companies, some of the comparable companies? Decide. Then relever the average beta according to the expected capital structure of precision cast parts post acquisition. Well, what is the expected capital structure? We have a very large company taking over a smaller company, PCC. We can assume, and this is usually the situation, that the capital structure of the larger company, in this case, Berkshire Hathaway, is going to prevail. Whatever capital choices Berkshire Hathaway has made will apply in turn to precision cast parts. Where are you going to find that information? Let's look at the case itself and see how we can use the data in order to lever and unlever betas. In table seven, you're given a lot of information about comparable companies. You have revenue, EBIT, EBITDA, net income. So you can calculate comparable multiple ratios. Furthermore, there is equity beta, tax rate, total debt, long-term debt, shareholders' equity, the stock price, and the number of shares. The stock price multiplied by the number of shares is the market cap, that is, the market value of equity. Typically, for the weighted average cost of capital, we want to use market value weights. Use interest-bearing debt, typically long-term debt, to get their total financing. Then calculate the debt equity ratio for each of those companies. Using the DE ratio to unlever beta using the Hamada equation. Levered beta equals unlevered beta multiplied by one plus the debt equity ratio multiplied by one minus the tax rate. Again, you have done this earlier in this course. Go back to those notes and look at how you can unlever beta then again, average the betas and relever according to the capital structure of both precision cast of, of Berkshire Hathaway. Now, where do you get that? In the case, you're also given financial statements of Berkshire Hathaway and precision cast parts, stock prices, number of shares, so you can get all the information you need to calculate to expect what you use for the capital structure. Once you have a beta, you'll use the capital asset pricing model, CAPM, to calculate the cost of equity. CAPM states that the return on equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times the market risk premium, where the market risk premium equals the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Again, typically you would use a, you will use a historic risk premium since we can't actually calculate an expected market return. Look at table eight. It's in the same tab as table seven at the bottom for market information. Again, go back to the earlier modules where we use the CAPM calculated cost of equity in the weighted average cost of capital equation. You also need a cost of debt and a tax rate. Typically, the parent company is stronger and can borrow money at a better rate than the target. So again, let us assume that once PCC is acquired by Berkshire Hathaway, that it will then pay the same tax rate as Berkshire Hathaway. To summarize, you want the risk of precision cast parts, which you'll get by looking at comparable company betas. You want the cost of debt, 
the tax rate, and the weights of Berkshire Hathaway, you will use the WAC that you calculated in the DCF valuation, which we will discuss in another video. Besides the DCF valuation, you need to value PCC using comparable multiple ratios and comparable precedent transactions. You have the information in the case for both of these. You should decide which multiple ratios to use and which comparable companies to use, which comparable precedent transactions should be used. Note with comparable multiples, you're getting a minority value, a stock price for the company. With comparable precedent transactions, these are transactions that have already been made and you will be getting a value for the company that will include a control premium. The information that you need is given in the case. In table six, you will have more comparable company information. Enterprise value to EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. These are the comparable companies that were used in the valuation that Berkshire Hathaway did. You've got multiples that you can use here, and you can also calculate multiple ratios from the comparable data in table seven. In table six, there are some comparable transactions data. Again, last 12 months EBITDA for various transactions that have been made. You can use these one at a time, or you can average them, some of them, all of them, and you can create your own multiples. You've got the data on comparable company from the comparable company exhibit in table seven. You've got revenue, so you can do a price to sales. You've got EBIT, EBITDA, net income, and book value of equity. So you can you get a stock price that you can use to calculate price to various multiples. You've got a lot of data that you can use for the comparable multiple ratio valuation. Now, what are you going to do once you have all that data? As you did in prior assignments, you have information that you can use, and the mathematics part is very easy. Once you take Exhibit 6 and 7 and pull out the data that you want, you can use the general formulas to calculate equity value or enterprise value. For example, enterprise value of PCC equals enterprise value of comparable company divided by EBITDA of the comparable company multiplied by EBITDA of PCC. Remember that enterprise value equals debt plus equity. To calculate the equity value from the enterprise value, you have to subtract debt and add excess cash not used in operations. When you calculate the value of PCC using comparable multiple ratios, you have calculated the market value of equity. Notice that you could either do this on price or equity value. If I've calculated a PE ratio by dividing market value by net income, and I multiply it by the net income of PCC, that gives me an equity value, also known as market cap. To get a price per share, I've got to divide by the number of shares outstanding. Again, do this exactly as you've done in the homework that you have had earlier. Looking at comparable transactions and comparable multiples valuation. Again, in these equations, you are using the ratios that were given to you or that you calculated multiplied by the appropriate number from PCC's income statement or balance sheet. So we've got the valuation, the, the WAC, the PCC, the ratios. Now we'll need to use our WAC in our DCF valuation in another video. Thank you.